Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to decorate this adorable rainbow unicorn cake. If you want to skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. Now I'm starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have tons of videos showing you how I bake my cakes, fill them, frost them, refrigerate them, make the marshmallow fondant, make the icing, all of that is gonna be linked in the description. And I will also link down there all of the tools that I use and any other videos that I reference. And I will also let you know how much I charged for this cake. So let's get started. All right, to start, I have gum text powder, Tylose powder, CMC powder. It's all basically the same thing. It's mixed into my fondant. I sprinkle a little bit on there, knead it into my marshmallow fondant, and it just helps it set up a little harder. It makes it so much easier to use. I will link this in the description. I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, a wet paper towel, an X-Acto knife, a Dresden tool, and a little bit of water. And I measured my cake and then I printed this out the size that I wanted to be. I will link all my pictures down in the description. I rolled out that white fondant. You can see how thick it was. And I'm going to do my trace cut and smooth method to create this unicorn. So I'm tracing the unicorn using my Dresden tool, tracing it onto the fondant. Make sure you don't press too hard. I don't want to poke a hole in the fondant. And then I'm tracing where I'm putting the little mane as well and the horn. You will see what I mean. And then I just want to cut her out just following those lines that I made. And anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to take my time and use my fingers and my tools to smooth all those jagged edges and make everything look nice and pretty. And then I have some pink fondant and I'm tracing all of these little pink details onto the fondant and then cut it out and smooth my cut. So it's trace cut smooth, trace cut smooth for all of these pieces, even those little tiny pieces as well. And then I have some lighter pink fondant and I'm doing the mouth. Make sure that I make a note of where I'm putting the smile and smooth that out. And my nails are disgusting. Please, I'm getting them done in two days. Um, you cannot make fun of my nails. <laughs> I know they look horrible, but anyway. So I'm tracing all the tail and the mane onto these different colors of fondant and cutting them out and smoothing my cuts. And on the yellow, I want to make sure I trace that little horn as well. And I want to make the details in the horn with my Dresden tool. And then I'm just tracing the other colors on there. Now I have a little bit of water and I'm getting the water behind all of the pieces and sticking these down according to the picture. And now do you see how I cut those little white pieces out there so I can stick this tail on there? And there was a piece sticking out there so I just cut it and removed it. But that's why I cut that extra white part so I can stick the colored fondant down to it. And I'm just redefining the lines for the ears. I'm taking a brown edible marker to make the eyelashes and the smile. And these tiny pieces are kind of a pain in the butt to work with, but I just get a little bit of water behind those and stick that down. And now you can see how I'm sticking that fondant to that extra white fondant that I left on there. And then I felt like I had to cut them in half. So I just cut each of those colors in half. I think it looks a lot better. And then I'm sticking on the horn and I rolled out that brown fondant and I am putting a little wood impression in there and I'm using my pin prick method just to prick, wait that did not sound right, <laughs> to poke a little holes um, for an outline and then I cut those out, smooth my cuts, realign them on the picture and I'm pushing him down on there just so he sits there perfectly and set that aside. Now I have some star cutters and I had that fondant rolled out from earlier and I am just doing a bunch of, I have two different sizes here so I'm just doing a bunch of stars in the bigger size and the smaller size in a bunch of different colors and then I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now I'm washing my hands. My hands are always clean when I touch my cakes. I got that out of the refrigerator. The icing is hard and solid. I'm not going to mess it up. Do you see how I offset that on the board over to the left? That's because I'm putting the rainbow there. So I stick my ruler down in there so I can measure how tall my straws have to be. And then I'm going to cut that marker off. And then I'm setting the top tier over to the right a little bit. I want to make sure that it's level and spread down some buttercream. I have a video where I go into detail on how I stack cakes and I will 
link that in the description. So then I put the top tier on, a little stacked over to the right, make sure it's level, then I dowel it through the board and cover that hole with some buttercream. And let's put that back in the fridge. Now I wanna measure how tall the rainbow has to be. So I wanna make the rainbow at least 14 inches tall. You'll see what I mean. So I have all these colors of fondant and I'm just rolling these out by hand and I'm not pushing very hard with my fingers. I don't wanna make marks with my fingers. So I'm kind of like spreading my hands apart as I'm rolling it. And you can see how thick I'm rolling each of these little colors out. And then I'm having it really long on the right side and then have it curved up on the left. So I did the same thing for the the blue and I'm lining it next to the purple and I'm just going to wrap it around that little Starbucks cup <laughs> so the the hook is nice and even so I'm doing the same thing for all the colors just trying to roll them all out to an equal thickness and wrapping them around And then I have this cake box lid. I'm gonna slide this on here because I need to stick all these pieces together with some water and I, that makes it a little easier to transfer. So I'm cutting it even on the bottom and I'm getting a little bit of water in between all of these. So if you have too much water, it's gonna seep out and it's gonna get wet and you don't want that. So I'm just getting the brush a little damp basically and getting water in between and pressing that together. And then I'm gonna to go to the next line and do it with all of the colors and make sure this is all stuck together. And make that a little even. And I'm gonna straighten that with my rulers, wrap it around the cup again, and just make sure this is perfectly straight before I set it aside to dry. And that dried for about three or four days before I put it on the cake. Now, again, I printed that out the size that I wanted it to be, and I am doing my trace cut and smooth method on here. And do you see I'm not going exactly on the black part? I want this to be a little thicker than it printed out, so I'm tracing it around the black, not exactly on the black. And I want to make sure I get the dot for the eye. And whenever I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to cut the inner pieces first and smooth that with my fingers and my tools. Trust me. It's so much easier to cut the center pieces out first before you cut the entire thing out. And then I'm just going to cut this name out. And once I cut the whole thing out, I'm saying cut it out a lot, <laughs> but once it's all cut out, I'm gonna take my time, use my fingers, use my tools, and smooth my cuts. Realign that back on the picture. And I don't want it to dry out, so I'm sticking it in a Ziploc bag and setting that aside so it stays pliable and I can put it on the cake. And then I have some white fondant, and it's rolled out about a quarter of an inch thick. And again, I'm tracing this on here. And if you have sweet stamps, you can use them, but I wanted this font to be the same font as the name, so I'm doing it this way. I'm just taking my tools and making the impression a little bit deeper. And then I wanna paint it gold. So I have some Roll Come Super Gold. I will link that in the description. It comes in this little powder and I put a little powder in a cup and mix it with some lemon extract. I have that really thin brush and you gotta have a steady hand. Don't drink coffee before you do this. <laughs> and I'm just dipping that in the gold and then carefully painting that word. And after that dried for about five minutes, I can align that cloud on the top. And again, I'll print out these pictures and, um, or I'll link the pictures in the description. And I'm just tracing it on there and cut that out and then take my fingers and smooth my cuts. And then I want this to have a pink background. So I have that thin pink fondant. I got a little bit of water on the back and I'm gonna stick that down. And then I'm just getting really close and carefully cutting an even border around the entire thing. And once I cut that out, I'm gonna take my time, flip it over and smooth my cuts from the back and from the front. And I'm gonna set that aside to dry flat. Now I rolled this fondant out a little thick and I finally bought some cloud cutters. <laughs> and I have some plastic here and I'm holding the plastic tight and then pressing that down. This way I'm gonna get a rounded cut. You can kind of see how it's rounded, it looks a lot better. And then of course, take my time and smooth my cuts. So the edges look nice and pretty. And I did that many, I'm doing so many clouds in all of the colors and I'm setting that aside on a cake box lid to dry and I did that for all the colors. 
Now I'm making some balls. So again, all of this fondant has that Tylose powder, the Gumtex powder in it. So these are gonna dry really hard. So I just wanna do a bunch of different sizes in all of the colors. And let's set those aside. Now I'm making little leaves. I'm just uh, free forming them, if you will. <laughs> just cutting that little shape, pressing it down on the veiner and pinching it on one end. And then I have this little play gun here with a small round tip on it and I'm lubing it up there with some shortening and get some of that hot pink fondant in there. This is going to be the strings for the swing and I'm just squeezing that out there. I'm going to cut them in half and I'm going to set them aside on that board with the leaves to dry. And I want to cut the border for the top tier so I just have that ribbon cutter. I rolled that pink fondant out really long and just cut that ribbon. Now I'm getting my cake out of the refrigerator and I have some piping gel and I'm just getting it around the perimeter of the top tier and wrapping that border around where it meets in the back. Just cut it and press the seam together and then I want to take my palette knife and press that down just to make sure it's nice and even. I have a wet paper towel and I'm cleaning the cake board. Let's get that name out and I want to make sure I have this in the right position. Now remember that icing is cold and solid. I'm not going to mess this up and I'm just quickly tracing this onto the buttercream just so I know where to put the name. So I'm getting a little bit of piping gel behind that and because I traced that on there I know I'm going to stick this on here and it's going to be nice and even. And now I have an icing bag with like a tip number seven or eight on it and I'm just getting a little bit of icing behind these clouds and I'm doing a couple layers of the clouds around the bottom Tier. So once I have it wrapped around the bottom, then I'm doing some in the front. I do like smaller ones up top. So just getting a little bit of icing behind all of these and sticking them down. And I try to stagger the colors. Like I don't like to have colors the same color touching each other. I'm just weird like that. <laughs> so I just like to make sure that there's a nice distribution in color. I'm getting some piping gel behind this part of the swing and sticking that down. And then I want to get some icing behind the unicorn where it's going to touch the cake and stick that down as well. And again, got some icing behind that piece and stuck that down. And I got some piping gel behind these little strings and I'm just putting them down there so it looks like he's on a swing. And I'm just taking a dry paintbrush and removing that excess icing. And I got some piping gel behind these leaves and I'm sticking them down. And I'm putting some of the clouds on the top tier. Again, I got some icing behind it. And I wanted some of those hot pink clouds on the bottom as well. The hot pink is the accent color for the cake. So I like to have it like distributed evenly. And then I'm getting some piping gel behind each of these stars and sticking those on there. And now I got that. See how that's set up for like four days? It's stiff. It's not going to break. So I trimmed the bottom and then I have to hold it up and see, like I still have to trim a little bit because it's not touching the top of the cake. So I just cut a little bit more off and that looks good. So I want to squeeze down a little bit of icing so I can set that rainbow in there and I put some icing on the board as well. And I stuck that down and it didn't seem like it was very secure. That could have fell off the cake. So let me lift that up and stick that down. And I'm going to take my palette knife and scrape out some of that icing that's in the top of the cake and create a hole for that top part of the rainbow to go in. So I just press that soft icing back in there. And then I can, do you see how I could push that rainbow down in the top of the cake? Now that's not going to fall off the cake. That ain't going anywhere. So I'm taking the icing and just piping a little bit of icing around there to really secure it on there. And I did that on the bottom as well. And then I hold that up there and I thought, I don't like all that icing that's sticking out. Um, so I just removed a little bit of it and sticking that down. And taking my dry paintbrush and just removing the excess icing. And same thing, I'm going to stick that little cloud down there. And I want to put these balls on here. So I'm getting a toothpick underneath them and sticking them down into the cake. And I get some piping gel down just to help it stick. 
And I, I don't like all that icing there, so I'm just removing that. <laughs> but I need some of the icing on the bottom because that rainbow is sticking to the bottom board with that icing. So I'm hammering a toothpick in there and sticking these balls onto the board. That way they won't roll off. If it's too long, I take my snips and just cut the excess off and stick the ball on there. And again, getting a toothpick behind there and sticking them down just to make sure they're secure. And I removed that excess icing that was sticking out and just putting the final touches on here. And my camera ran out right at the end, but at least I got most of it done that you could see how I put it together. And here is the cake. How adorable is that? So there you go. How cute is this cake? I just love the way it turned out. Now, just wanted to go over something with you. When Addison's mom sent me pictures of the decorations and invitations, she sent over this cake and said that this was vibes. And it is an adorable cake. I love the way it looks. However, that is cotton candy that is on that cake. And I did let her know that cotton candy, that, that picture was probably taken right after that cotton candy was placed on there. Cotton candy does not last very long. One little hint of moisture or humidity will melt that cotton candy. So I told her that I couldn't do cotton candy, but I asked if I could do something with rainbows. She said, you can do unicorns, rainbows, whatever you think, I trust you. And I love when customers say that. <laughs> it takes the weight off my shoulders and allows me to be creative. So I did base this on another design that I did and I'll put that cake here and you could see that was darker colors and I did switch it up a little bit because this was on cloud nine theme so I added all the clouds on there as well. Now the inside of this cake, the top tier is a two layer torted five inch and the bottom tier is a three layer not torted seven inch and I did three layers on the bottom tier so it would be a little taller and I would have room to make her name really big and also fit the clouds on the bottom. It feeds 30 to 35 people and how much did I charge? This one was $450. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave it in the comments below. And just a reminder, I do have a Cake Academy membership program. I will link all that information in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is in the, in the description. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you can check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next. And hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.